The times, they are changing. And when you work in PPC, it feels like they're changing faster and faster. The tactics that drove your best results in 2015 are probably no longer working. So what's a PPC practitioner to do? Welcome to PPC Zone, September 2022. I'm your host, Jill Saskin Gales, and I created this event to elevate new perspectives and insights in our industry. Next up in the zone, this speaker is a marketing strategist who specializes in content, CRO, and community. He currently leads marketing for Optimizer, and will actually both be speaking at Optimizer's free online conference, Unlevel, coming up on September 21st. For today, he's going to share his perspective with us on three tests you can run to optimize your responsive search ad performance. Please welcome Ashwin Balakrishnan. Thank you, Jill. Uh, my name is Ashwin, I'm from Optimizer, and welcome to my PPC Zone presentation on how to build and test winning responsive search ads. I'm really excited to talk today about RSAs, why you should be paying attention to them, um, as well as sharing some tests and some data that we pulled from Optimizer's product data as well. Um, so let's get into it. So responsive search ads, of course, are the new default when you create a search campaign in Google. This is the option that you're going to start with. Uh, they have the same minimum requirements as expanded text ads, which you can no longer create. Uh, three headlines, two descriptions, and you can have up to three ads, three RSAs per ad group. The difference, of course, with RSAs is that you can now go up to 15 headlines and four descriptions, and then Google will mix those up in different combinations to find the best uh, ad for a particular search query. Now, one of the reasons that Google is moving towards more automated solutions like responsive search ads is so that anybody can open up Google ads and start advertising quickly. In this process, though admirable, some of the inputs and recommendations from Google are not necessarily the best. And ad strength is one that you can disregard right off the bat. So in this example, that Nava Hopkins shared with us some time ago, you can see that the quality of the ads, they're not really saying, saying anything, but Google's only feedback is that you're not using enough keywords. So the detection of quality is simply not present. Ad strength, while a good guideline, is not something that you should aim to improve. Uh, rather, use your own judgment when determining the quality of your ads. What you should instead focus on are structure and creative. And along with first party data, these two are probably going to be what really allows you to get the most out of a more Google uh, automated version of Google Ads. So with ETA's account structure was pretty straightforward. You'd have a campaign, multiple ad groups within the campaign, and each ad group targeting a group of keywords. And then you'd have multiple expanded text ads within those ad groups, um, each of those competing with one another to see which ad can serve most frequently and get the best performance. With responsive search ads, up until the ad group level, it's largely the same principle. But when you get to the ad level, RSAs don't just compete against other ads in the ad group, they compete against versions of themselves. So RSA one, depending on the number of headlines, can have a certain number of combinations that present. So not only is it competing against the other two RSAs in your ad group, it's also competing against all the other combinations that Google thinks it might be a good fit for. So in order to find your best RSAs and, and build the best structure you can, there are three tests that we recommend running. The first of these is pinning. So another feature of RSAs is the ability to tell Google that certain headlines and descriptions should appear in specific positions. So you can pin one field to a specific position. You can say headline one should always show in the first position. You can then pin multiple fields to the same position. You can say your first three headlines, uh, you can pin all of those to first position and then Google will make sure that any one of those always serves as headline number one. And the third thing you can do is pin all of your uh, elements. Now keep in mind if you're pinning fully, you can only show three headlines and two descriptions no matter what. So the first three headlines and the first two descriptions that you pin will be the only ones that uh, Google shows as part of your ad. Now Google says that pinning is going to reduce your reach and is not recommended. Yes and no. Our data shows that even though unpinned ads have decent performance, when you pin some elements, though the CTR takes a small dip, the conversion rate does increase uh, considerably. And for fully pinned ads, 
uh, both CTR and conversion rate do go up. And our interpretation is straightforward. When advertisers have more control over how their ads show, the results tend to be better, which isn't surprising. The next test, probably the most important as a copywriter, I would definitely prioritize this above everything else, is your messaging. Um, so when you have, when you had ETAs, it was easy to go in and kind of build a campaign on the fly. With RSAs, it becomes much more important that you plan your structure out beforehand so you know what you're trying to achieve. You want to have good uh, structure from top down, which means that you have a clear campaign goal and then you build things out so there's no overlap between uh, keywords and ad groups. But you also want to make sure that it makes sense from the bottom up, that you're coming back to that same goal uh, and that your campaigns aren't cannibalizing each other or eating into each other's traffic. Uh, so messaging is, is one of the things that you can use to continually test the structure of your uh, RSA campaigns. You can test calls to action, you can test value propositions, you can test um, variations in messaging. Uh, and if you're going to be changing things across campaigns, then you can use ad variations in Google Ads to make that happen pretty quickly and easily. We found from our data that sweet spot is one to two RSAs per ad group. This is where you do get um, a good increase to your performance. It does come at a small cost increase. But when you get to three RSAs, you don't really see the increase in performance that the cost increase justifies. And of course, the final test that you want to run is maximizing your impressions. When it comes to ETAs, it was pretty straightforward. If the keyword didn't work, it didn't work. You had to try something new. But an RSA with buried copy, as long as you're not fully pinning or, or making it too restrictive on Google, uh, especially paired with broadcast, this allows Google to then create new ads on the fly, qualify you for more options, and really be able to uh, show your ad to more people. And that's really what RSAs are about, is maximizing the number of impressions that you can uh, potentially get. If you're going to run this experiment, we highly recommend having more text. More text clearly means more impressions. Uh, and if, if that's what you're trying to see, then we, we recommend maxing out on your text. So ultimately, why does this all matter? The bottom line is Google likes RSAs. We don't know why, whether it's because of an internal product decision or because RSAs tend to lend to better quality score, but they do get more than double the impressions of ETAs. But it's not just Google, even customers prefer RSAs. We see in our data that the RSA ad groups tend to get more than 50% more conversions than the ones with just ETAs. And as you implement some of these changes uh, and tests, we highly recommend that you change the way you look at success. With an expanded text ad, it was pretty straightforward. You look at conversion rate, you look at um, which ad performed better ultimately, and that was your winner. With RSAs, because of their nature, the increase in impressions uh, frequently offsets the slight dip that you'll see in conversion rate. So monitor not only the number of conversions that you get, but also look at the total value of those conversions. Measure them up against your target CPA or target ROAS if you have one, or your total ad spend. You may discover that even though your conversion rate dips, you're ultimately running more profitable ads. Uh, I hope you have a lot of luck with your RSAs. They're the only ads that we can create for search campaigns going forward. So uh, definitely an important piece of Google Ads that is here to stay. Thank you so much for your time and thanks Jill for having me. And thanks to you, Ashwin, for sharing your unique perspective and insights with us in the zone. If you'd like to connect with Ashwin, you can find him on Twitter at The Copy Trail. To learn more about PPC Zone and our speakers, or to apply to speak at an upcoming event, visit ppc.zone. I'm your host, Jill Saskin-Gales. You can find me on Twitter at Jill Saskin-Gales. I look forward to seeing you next time in the zone.